got it. All right, today we're bringing back the bike lab with a pretty cool test. Today we're asking the question, is Slacker always better? Stick around to find out. So it's kind of trendy right now uh, to say, hey, I wanna make my bike slacker. So some of the reasons that you would want to do this is A, I mean, you're gonna be more stable at speed. You get the front wheel out in front of you a little bit more, which is gonna help out. You're gonna be able to plow or just smash over obstacles a little bit better. And you're also gonna be able to go down steeper stuff with more confidence. Some potential drawbacks to making your bike slacker. It's going to slow down your handling and you're gonna have a little bit less responsive feeling bike. It's going to make your wheelbase longer. So if it's already pretty long, uh, it's just only going to get longer. And then on tight, twisty trails, that can be a little bit of a problem. And some of the things we're about to do to our bikes today could potentially get you into some warranty issues. So there's a handful of ways that you can make your bike more slack. One of the most common ways of doing this is over forking, which means, you know, your bike comes with 130 mil. It's good. Yeah, that was really good. I got a bike one time with 130 mm -hmm. travel. That's my favorite bike. <laughs> one of the most common ways of doing this is going to be over forking, meaning you're adding travel to your fork, which lifts the front end up. Your bike comes with 130 millimeters of travel, you put 140 or 150 millimeters of travel on it. One of the things that's going to do to your bike is, it, you know, it lifts the front end, makes the front end slacker, but it also makes your seat tube angle slacker, and it's also going to lift your bottom bracket off of the ground just a little bit more. You know, that does affect how your bike rides. So another way to make your bike slacker is an angle adjust headset. These basically change the angle that your fork goes through your head tube. They generally range from about a half degree to one and a half to even two degrees slacker. So a little bit counterintuitive to what most people would think with this, it will actually lower the front end of the bike. It pushes that wheel out farther, we can get all nerdy trigonometry thing, but we're not going to, but by pushing that farther out, it's going to lower the head tube, it lowers your bottom bracket, it steepens your seat tube angle. It does all these things that, yes, it pushes it out farther, but do these other things help with the handling of the bike? And there are kind of two more ways you can do this. You've probably seen it. It's just like a lower headset cup that adds 10 mils of height to the, you know, underneath your head tube between the crown of your fork. And basically that's the same as over forking without the benefit of the extra travel. So yeah. we don't see that too often. And then the last one is some frames have a flip chip. You know, you're able to change the geometry just by changing the little flip chip. All right, so on our bikes, so I'm on a Yeti SB160E, Connor's on an Orbea Rise. Both of these bikes use an integrated headset system and there's not a whole lot of options out there in order to do this, but 9.8 makes a system that allows us to adjust the head tube angle on our bikes. Connor's ends up being 1.5 degrees. Mine ended up being 1.6 degrees, which is a pretty good amount of head tube angle adjust. It was very noticeable from the very beginning, and, and we're gonna get into that uh, in just a second here. On my Yeti, it pushed the head tube angle from 64.5, which is pretty darn slack, out to about 62.9, which is really slack. Like you look at the bike even and it's like, wow, that's like out there, kind of looks cool. But what I really found is if I was in areas where I could open up and just let it rip, man, that bike got incredible. It just carried so much speed. On the contrast though, I, I found that when things got really tight, especially in climbing and tight and turning, which on the Zen Trail, which we rode in St. George, it is, really tight and turny and twisty in some places, that it did make it a little harder. My handlebar height dropped, and we measured this about 11 millimeters. Yours was 12. Mine was 12. Yeah, okay. mine was I mean, 11. it was a really, really precise measuring tape on carpet floor of a hotel room, yep. but we're within a millimeter or two right there. It didn't really bother me. It got me over the front of the bike a little bit more, which it needed. When you push that bike out more, you've got to get more weight over the front. I found that that front end of the bike was pushing a little weird. Getting the over the front of the bike helped me to compensate that. And by the time I was done with the testing, I would more or less gotten used to it. Not perfect in every situation. So cornering was a little bit loose, a little bit harder to get the traction up front. Again, something I kind of compensated for, but I really questioned like, is that really better? If I was riding trails that were just really fast, yeah, it's probably better. But when things get a little bit tighter and a lot of our day-to-day -day trails, I don't know that I think it's the absolute best solution for me. Our bikes are very different to begin with. Yeah. You know, your bike is slacker, bigger, burlier to begin with. I had a little bit different experience on my bike. My bike, the very first thing I noticed was the lower handlebar height. The rise normally feels a little bit high to me. 
and uh, after making this adjustment, it felt pretty low. I felt like my weight was pulled a lot further forward, which on the climbs actually was pretty nice. And I think it almost counteracted kind of that hit you take when you make your bike a little bit slacker. So I was able to weight the front of my bike pretty well on the climbs, even though I was a degree and a half slacker. I did notice the steering was a little bit slower and at some points, maybe even a little bit floppy. You know, overall on the climbs, I don't think I paid too big of a penalty for that little bit slacker head tube angle. On the downhill, my bike felt a little bit less responsive. It wasn't kind of that snappy, lively trail all mountain bike that I'm used to and that I, that I like out of the rise. So I think the bike lost a little bit of its magic there, but I think the rise is a bike that could really benefit from a slacker head tube angle. You know, you make that a degree, a degree and a half slacker, and it starts to become pretty capable. Yeah. It, it kind of takes it from that trail or long travel trail and puts it squarely in that all mountain category. So on my bike, I really liked the slacker front end. There were a couple of drawbacks, but for me and the bike that I started with, I think it ended up being a little bit better. Well, and I think to me that riding style again really plays a lot into it. Where you ride really plays in, a lot into it. Here's a question for you, Connor, and the question to myself as well. Would you keep the angle adjusting headset on your bike? For me on the rise, yes. I think I would make a couple of tweaks. Like I said, the handlebars dropped a lot. I think I would counteract that with either a riser bar or over forking maybe to bring that height back up. But I did like the slacker front end on my bike. And for me, I am, I'm gonna be honest, I'm still really torn. I, I can see and feel the benefits of both. I've, I'm keeping it on for now but I kind of wonder when a lot of the trails open up that are a little tighter around here, a little twistier around here, you know, I, I think there's a pretty good chance that I end up going back. All right, so one question I want to ask is, is it better to over fork or is it better to use an angle adjust headset? My honest response to that is going to probably be both. The you geometry mean, it, changes. It, you mean both at the same time, not yes. like one or the other, but both together. Yes, both okay. at the same time is really, what I think makes the most sense. By pushing that fork angle out, that head tube drop, you know, you can start striking pedals more. You know, again, like Connor was really feeling the front end was too low for him. By going back in and just bumping that fork travel up a little bit, it's gonna compensate for a lot of that change. And I think really help to maintain the overall geometry of your bike and just change the head tube. If you had to pick one, what's your choice? I think I would probably go with just over forking by 10 millimeters. I think it's probably the simplest solution. You can buy an air spring rather cheaply and swap it out and go from 150 to 160, 140, 150. And I would probably just take the hit on a slightly slacker seat tube angle. You do get the benefit of a slacker head tube angle and a little bit more travel up front, which I think kind of kills two birds yeah. with one stone. And you can push your saddle slightly forward which will help to compensate for that a bit. So Zach and I had pretty different experiences with slacker head tube angles, and I think it's because we were on different bikes to begin with. So I think some bikes are going to be better candidates for a slacker front end than others. For example, my Norco Range, that is the last bike I wanna do this <laughs> on. It is already longer than a double city bus, and it is slacker than any other bike I have ever ridden. It does not need to be slacker, it does not need to be longer. Something like my Rise, awesome, great. I think it's a really good candidate for a slacker front end. So one of the bikes that I think can really, really benefit from this and that we've been doing at the shop with some great success is an Ibis Ripley. The bike's fantastic. It's fun, it's snappy, but every once in a while you get into some situations where you just feel like a little more head tube angle, a little more fork can go a long ways. We've been extending the fork and doing an angle set on it and man, it just really takes that bike to another level. Yeah, it adds a degree of capability to maybe an otherwise conservative bike, which that conservative bike is great for a mm -hmm. lot of people. Yeah. You know, people who want that, who want to climb quickly, who want to hit rolling terrain and just cover a lot of ground. But someone like me who maybe wants to go ride nastier, rougher trails, mm -hmm. it now adds that degree of capability to let me do that. Well, and it takes it frankly, really close to the Ripley AF, the aluminum version, which right. they extended the head tube angle a little bit on. And I think it's kind of interesting that you can make your bike really close to what's a little bit more modern geometry. Speaking of modern geometry, I think the other category of bikes that can really benefit from this is say maybe like three or four year old bikes that are yeah. starting to be 
a little bit outdated or a little bit too conservative. If you're trying to extend the life of that bike, you're trying to put off upgrading or buying a new bike, I think making that head tube angle slacker is a good way to get you know another couple of years out of it. Yeah. You're able to kind of bring it a little bit closer to modern geometry. One thing you really want to look out for on those bikes though is the seat tube angle. Four years ago they were a lot slacker than they are today and now if you over fork you know it's only getting slacker. Again I think the best solution is the headset cup paired with a longer fork to slack out the front end without affecting the bike's overall geometry too much. I think a bike for me that's a good example of that one is like a, an older tall boy. You know we sold so many older tall boys and they were great and they hold up forever because they just really do. But it's a little bit steep on the head tube angle um, and it is a little more on the slack side on the seat tube angle. So you know you do the combo thing, uh, slack it out some, give that bike some new life without spending a ton of money. Really maybe prolong your enjoyment of the bike for another year or two. All right so we're expecting to get a lot of heat in the comments on this <laughs> one because uh, this is a pretty complex topic. There are a lot of moving parts and we tried to stay pretty high level here. We didn't want to get super in the weeds on it. I'm sure people will want to get in the weeds in the comments. So we're ready. Bring it on. Um, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time.